إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده قد قال تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم رب زدني علما رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear respected listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing with our series of the du'as from the Holy Quran, we went over verse number 8 of Surah Al Imran. The next du'a mentioned by Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal is the very next verse. Of Surah Ali Imran, and the wording of the verse is Rabbana innaka jami'un nasi li yawmin la rayb fi inna allaha la yukhlifu al-mi'ad this is the entire ayah some commentators of the Quran break down this verse saying that the first portion is the actual dua the second is the statement of Allah so Rabbana إِنَّكَ جَامِعُ النَّاسِ لِيَوْمِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ is this dua and إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ is the statement from Allah رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ affirming why we make that dua so first the translation our Lord surely you are the gatherer of all mankind on a day about which there is no doubt Verily, Allah never fails in His promise. The ayah before this ayah, the Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma, was concerning steadfastness, was concerning istiqama on the deen, was concerning being steadfast and having. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the controller of the hearts keep us firm on belief. And so subsequently this dua affirms that our ultimate maqsad and goal has nothing to do with worldly motives but the guidance that we are seeking from Allah and the steadfastness that we want and that guidance is solely made for the hereafter. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when teaching this ummah, how to make dua, and what to supplicate for, what are the important things to keep in mind, then there is nothing more important than salvation in the hereafter. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that once you have begged me for steadfastness and firmness upon the deen, understand that the primary focus of yourself should be salvation in the hereafter. And this is understood by the believers affirming, إِنَّكَ جَامِعُ nas. That without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, surely you are the one who will gather all of mankind. Those who believed, those who didn't believe, those who were old, those who are young, those who are sick, those who are healthy, those who are poor, those who are wealthy, all of mankind. On a day in which there is no doubt. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subtly is teaching the believer that when we make dua, keep the things that are important at the forefront of asking Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Now, having said that, we know that in other places in the books of hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has told us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every instance. And when it comes to worldly matters, then you ask of them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what shouldn't happen to a believer is such focus of this temporary abode overcomes the believer that they are constantly and consistently neglecting the ultimate thing that they should be asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah will gather all of humanity, the fact that after gathering all of humanity, Allah will take account of his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question each and every one of us in some way, shape or form. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our questioning before Allah is the one where he skims through our accounts and graces us with his mercy and not one where he takes account in its literal sense and questions us for every minute detail of obedience and disobedience. And when we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we sit in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask, the hereafter should be at the forefront of our asking. Salvation on that day. Being concerned of the affairs of the hereafter. That when I leave this world at the final moment when the angel of death comes to remove my nafs from the body and separate it and I am returned to the realm of the hereafter, then in what condition does that take place? How do I leave this world? Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna Or is it a different calling from the angel of death? And this is what we have to ponder upon. And this is when we raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alongside all the other things that we ask for. This should be a primary, fo- primary focus in our du'as, in our supplications. And to emphasize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, لِيَوْمِ la رَيْبَ fi." That you are going to gather, you are the gatherer of people on a day in which there is no doubt. And then Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ Allah has said this through His own words in the Holy Qur'an. The Messenger وسلم, has verified this through His words that were inspired to Him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Ahadith. The consensus of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah is a primary belief in Islam is that we all have to stand before Allah on one day. And so Allah says, Inna Allah la This promise that He has made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, ever, this is a principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah never fails in His promise. And He has promised us a reckoning. He has promised us a standing in front of Him. And so the believer, when they acknowledge that I need to and I will have to stand before Allah, the most effective form of removing difficulty on that day alongside other ibadat is dua. So every effort should be made when we, when we make dua and supplicate to Allah that we never forgo looking to our akhirah in our supplications. And the Prophet ﷺ has taught us this. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ would make dua, the akhirah and the hereafter would have a heavy portion of what the Prophet ﷺ supplicated for. And once again, I'm stressing, that's not to say that you can't 
ask for other things. But at the same time, do not neglect what's the most important. For if you attain Allah and the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ Whoever is saved from the fire of Jahannam, pushed away from the fire of Jahannam, وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ and is admitted into the gardens of paradise, فَقَدْ فَازِ then most definitely this person has succeeded. And what's interesting is what Allah says after that, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُ الْغُرُورِ And the reality of the worldly life is a means of uh, pastime and deception. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us even here that the hereafter is the ultimate goal. If you succeed there, that is the ultimate goal. And the reality of this world is that it is, uh, it is full of deception. The success that we read into in this world is temporary. A person is rich today and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can turn that around and this person is left with nothing the day after. A person has nothing today and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns the fortunes around and this person is beyond uh, the notion of wealthy in people's perceptions and eyes. A person is healthy and he's got his entire life to look forward to and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strikes this person down with the test of illness and this person's outlook on life completely changes. And the examples can be given of how this world is deceptive in, 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 its, in, its, in, its, in its entity. Nothing is real in the world that we live in in terms of longevity. Everything has a time limit. Everything ends in this world. There is nothing that will remain forever. And so in essence... It is not real. It is not something that is continuous. What is real is the hereafter, which is eternal, which is forever and ever, which is infinite. In Adr Shaykh Nawar Allahu Marqadahu, in Fadail al Amal, he describes the understanding of the hereafter and this world. And he said, Imagine that you fill this world with seeds that a bird comes. After X amount of years, he uses a long number, a hundred, a thousand uh, years, and takes one seed. Any rational individual will tell you that despite how long it will take, the world is not infinite, both in its time and in its space. And so the occupancy of space by those seeds means that there's a number to it. Now, irrespective of how long it takes... Those seeds, if this bird continues in the duration that it's fixed for it, then eventually all the seeds will be plucked up by this bird. But the hereafter is such that there is no end to it. How many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hereafter? خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا They will remain within both the inhabitants of paradise and both the inhabitants of Jahannam. They will remain within forever and ever and ever. And so, لا ريب في إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد. There is no doubt in this coming of gathering of the people in the hereafter. Don't be under any illusion. Allah has promised this. This will happen. And إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد. Indeed, most definitely, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not fail in any of the promises that He makes. And so, when we supplicate to Allah, when we supplicate and make du'a to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Never fail to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the success in the hereafter. Because ultimately if you succeed there, then this world and what you attained and didn't attain will have uh, no, no bearing whatsoever in terms of success. But if you fail there, no matter what you may have accumulated in this world, then that in essence will be failure. So in Allah la yukhlifun mi'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses to us the importance of Remembering that there is a hereafter And when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Never forgetting that So our dua should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alongside all of our needs The biggest need being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us 
salvation on that day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success on that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that salvation and that success to myself and to all of the listeners and to all of our loved ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, our iman, so that when we leave this world, we leave in a good state and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased to see us. What good is that life where however you spent it, when you leave it, if Allah is unhappy with us, then subhanAllah, there's no words to describe the despair and the utter loss that a person will feel at that moment when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us, keep our iman and that difficult time when our final time comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to leave this world uh, with faith, with the kalima la ilaha illallah in a state where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy to uh, welcome us in the next life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a focus in this life on the importance of the hereafter. وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان الله بحمدي سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته